welcome to today's lecture this is on design analysis of gear pumps part 2 this is continuation of part 1 now last time uh, what we have learned that uh, in gear pumps external to the gear pump uh, if we consider the blue one is the driving one then uh, the flow is in here and then that is carried out to the other side of the uh, pump uh, and uh, there must be uh, the volume expansion and volume compression in this zone. Uh, actually we would say it can be shown that the volume displaced among three contacts, one contact with this wall one contact with this wall and then contact between tooth that space is uh, will be in compressive here and this will be in expansion mode here that is two contacts of two gears and casing and missing teeth at center at both inlet and outlet okay a and uh, the volume displacement is exactly equal to the summation of active amount of trapped volume. The active amount means if we look into this some oil is going back to the other side. So, uh, active amount is the um, what is the volume displacement uh, happening here. Okay. Now, also we learned that if we consider this is the external pump in that case what we have to consider we have to consider a control volume which is which constituted by the point here the point at the mesh and the point on the other side of the wall. Now what is happening when this is rotating in the clockwise rot rotation then this is rotating in the anticlockwise di uh, directions this point is going downwards where whether these two points coming closer we have to consider the contact point um, i mean when this just uh, left this wall from that point to to the situation when this point again will leave this wall so in that way we can it can be shown that this uh, area that is varying and this area varying in a nature that gradually this area is being compressed. So, that can be derived or that can be written in the equation form by considering uh, a small amount of going in here and going in here and going out from this zone uh, here. Now, um, this is for uh, d theta 1 rotation of the drive gear. So, we can write down this equation in this form right and then the final equation for the theoretical flow rate of the gear pump is in dimensionless form is obtained. Uh, say q d is equal to half into r a 1 r a 1 uh, which is the addendum or tip circle radius of this uh, gear drive gear rho 1 is the instantaneous uh, radius at the contact point uh, r p 1 by r p 2 is equal to the ratio of the speech circle radii of these two gears which is normally is 1 and uh, rho 2 is the contact distance here. So, in if we would like to equate in this way what we have to calculate each and every instant we have to calculate these two rho 1 and rho 2 because other dimension are fixed. So, if these two are varying naturally this uh, dimensionless flow is also varying. 
we have to keep in mind this uh, derivation is actually derivation of this area into the thickness of the pump which is constant okay and we have also learned in the dimensionless form what we did to make this flow is dimensionless form we divided this into the rb square and the width as well as divided by the speed to get this flow rate dimensionless flow rate now to determine this uh, rho 1 and rho 2 first of all we should analyze the gear mesh geometry with varying theta theta is varying the shaft rotational angle which is shaft rotational angle and the instantaneous length of action and thereby the instantaneous flow rate is further determined as oh, before that I would say that while we are doing some uh, geometric analysis first of all we must know what are the uh, axis system we have considered in this case if we consider capital x and y this is fixed to the reference frame that is this is a fixed axis which as you can see this is uh, x and uh, y capital x and capital y and again um, that we should say that uh, this it is ordinated by fixed angle psi with the line joining the centers of the gears. Okay. This is the center of uh, line joining the centers of the gears from here this at this angle. Now, we must know what is this angle. Then we have considered another uh, uh, axis system x y which is fixed to the this gear the driving gear. Now, it is like that that x y small x y axis is through the uh, middle of this one teeth which with which just the contact has started. You see this is rotating in the clockwise direction. So, this is in the anti clockwise direction the contact has just started here at that position if we consider the half of this teeth then we get this line which is small x axis. Now, when theta is equal to 0 then um, this x y axis small x y axis coincide with capital X y axis that means by knowing this um, axis position with risk knowing the number of teeth etcetera, then we can find out what will be the capital X y axis we have considered. Okay. This is not a difficult task we can assign that and then what we do we consider this geometry we are trying to calculate row 1 and row 2 and then we consider this point is moving gradually and then we find out this length doing this uh, pressure angle and from there we find out this length rho 1 and rho 2 ultimately we find out the length of contact and ultimately we express the flow equations in terms of length of contact. It is written here how this uh, x axis are considered when theta 1 is equal to 0. Now, ultimately we can replace this rho 1 and rho 2 and the equation is expressed in terms of length of contact instantaneous length of contact which is the contact from the pitch point to the instantaneous contact we have to consider this length. Okay. If we can calculate this length then uh, this will be expressed easily because other terms are constant. Now, what is instantaneous point of tooth contact that if we 
define that in terms of this contact radius and angle, then contact radius is expressed in this form. You can check this geometry and you will find that this is the expression and then we consider uh, this beta 1 angle which was last time shown this can be derived this beta ang 1 angle in this form and then finally, with psi 1 is equal to pi by 2 z minus 1 that is this angle is equal to nothing but uh, half of this angle half of this this is pi by z 1 is equal to um, tooth thickness basically I mean half one tooth angle and half of that. Okay. So, possibly this angle psi 1 is defined here no not defined, but just consider this angle is calculated from the, the relation of the teeth number only. Then equation 12 and 13 must be solved numerically for a given theta 1. Now, we shall consider at starting this equation the rho 1 at starting will be expressed in this form and then contact length L s in dimensional less form is also expressed as like this. Then we get this angle expressed by this expression where this is also at the starting and then the instantaneous length of tooth com contact is defined as L is equal to rho 1 sin of this angle and sec alpha. Now, the relationship between rho 1 and beta 1 is nonlinear, hence the numerical solution to this equation will yield the most accurate results for instantaneous length of action. We can solve this numerically, but what uh, I would like to mention say this alpha, alpha is the pressure angle. Now, we have to take care of this alpha, say here we consider um, that might be with uh, generated by a standard pressure angle say 20 degree pressure angle. Then when they are meshing at if they mesh at a their standard pitch circle radius then alpha remain constant that is working pressure angle remain same as 20 degree. But if we change the center distance definitely this working pressure angle will change. Now, we should keep in mind sometimes the teeth number are taken less than the allowable teeth number to avoid the undercut and in that case working pressure angle changes. Therefore, we should always keep in mind this pressure angle is equal to the working pressure angle not the standard pressure angle. While we are trying to find out the base circle radius of such gear, then we consider only the standard pressure angle there. So, we should not confuse with the working pressure angle and the standard pressure angle. All such uh, expression we have to consider the working pressure angle. However, a closed form approximation this I told that we can uh, we should go for the numerical analysis I mean numerical solutions to find out the flow. Uh, uh, but recently uh, Mandring and his co-author is Kasargada they have proposed a close from solution. So, now to arrived into such close from solutions first of all uh, we have to consider all contacts points. But before that I would like to mention uh, in the methods which we, we have discussed so far 
what we have done we have considered a control volume and we have a control volume for that what we observe that basically the con uh, area area is changing and the width remain constant. So, if we can equate the change of area variation of area with theta then we can find out the flow um, variations. However, there is an, uh, another method in which what is done we consider that those three points definitely, but instead of considering this area what we consider we consider a beam joining this um, instantaneous tooth contact point and the point where uh, this tooth is just uh, separating the exposed zone to the trapped zone. Okay. Now, if I consider that as a beam say this point is point of contact may be here the casing is uh, or my might be here. Anyway, if we take these two point what we can consider this is a we can consider a beam with uniform load which is equal to the pressure. The load is equal to the pressure into may be the this area that is uniform load. By that way we can find out that how much resultant load acting on this line at the midpoint and we will find that from that midpoint we have a distance to the center of the gear. So, therefore, if we multiply that distance into this load we will find a torque. So, that torque is acting on this gear. Similarly, if we consider the other gear also we will find another torque which is acting on the other gear. Now, this total torque is transmitted by the shaft. So, in that way we can cal calculate what is the total power or total energy that definitely that is uh, um, rotational angle into that torque. Okay. If we consider the power the rate of um, I mean speed in that case we have to consider speed and the torque. Now, this equation uh, we are considering the energy not the power energy in that case what we consider that m 1 is the torque here instantaneous into the angle of rotation d theta 1 and m 2 is on the other gear and multiplied by d theta 2. Okay. So, this is the total energy. Now, Again this energy can be expressed in form of the rate of change of volume and the pressure. Now this pressure is the differential pressure that means output pressure minus the input pressure. In this case we consider the input pressure is 0. So, we have considered the output pressure here. Now if we uh, consider these two equations then we can easily calculate because the same pressure we are considering for, for these two. So, we can easily calculate uh, rate of change of volume with the angle of rotation and from there again considering this change of this length that means change in torque with of course constant pressure because geometrically as the volume is being displaced here there is a compression in this side expansion then definitely this length is also changing accordingly. So, we have to find this length instant instantaneous length to find out the instantaneous torque. Now, again we have to consider the geometry through this geometric analysis we arrived into this equation with this energy method. right? Then if we compare with this equation earlier which we have derived considering the control volume this equation more or less same 
only what we find that here the half is not there and here the instantaneous square of the instantaneous length where this is uh, some value this u. Now, we can relate this u with lay L with these relations while we this was derived in fact, this can be also derived within this form, but here the geometric analysis was different from this axis considerations. So, in that way the formula is coming like, but what is found that these are basically same or in other words now if we would like to find out the numerical solutions for the uh, flow, then whether we use this equation or use this equation we will arrive into same result. However, to um, for the close from solution we consider this equation 10 and we are trying to find out whether this can be solved. Now, close from solution means you have to um, find out you have to relate this L with theta with some approximation or with some solution. Now, let us see that what uh, the Manring et al have done for generating a closed form solution for the instantaneous pump flow a Taylor series expansion uh, is done. In that case L uh, which we have expressed in this form for very small value of theta I mean we have to consider in this case for such equations the theta 1 varying very discreetly with a small amount. Then in Taylor series expansion we can express this instantaneous length of contact is in this form where the rho 1 s is the uh, initial rho 1 that is at the starting s means at the starting point and as well because this angle is fixed it is not varying whether beta 1 is varying this beta 1 is varying as th this gear rotates and theta 1 for which we are calculating the um, this one it is small we have considered and then this is the working pressure angle. So, we can express in this form obviously the other terms there is Taylor series mean there are other terms also which is negligibly small and we have neglected those. So, this simply expressed in this form. Now, L is then express L s minus rho 1 s cos alpha beta 1 s that if you look into this L then L s minus when it is just moved we can calculate this part and L is expressed in this form. Then this of course, could be considered, but again further approximation is done that uh, this rho 1 s cos um, xi minus beta 1 s is, uh, into sec alpha is equal to 1. Why this is considered? This from the geometry it can be proved this is very close to 1. We can say that this equation 80, uh, 18 is now reduced to this one and we may consider that there is some error which error can be uh, found out by subtracting 19 from 18 hmm? and then it is found that at theta 1 is equal to 0 you can see that it is 0, error is 0 but it will increase slightly with the increase in theta 1. But remember this theta 1 we are considering what will be what should be the maximum theta 1 theta 1 is equal to 0 then what will be the maximum theta 1 just one pitch rotation one pitch rotations is d, d means that 2 pi or uh, actually not even one pitch one base pitch you can say 
and for that the total rotation is equal to 2 pi by z 2 pi by z and z is usually taken maybe uh, 20 at the lowest maybe 10 not less than that at least I have not seen I, I do not know whether it can 10, but you usually will find it is in the range of 20. So, now you can find out 360 divided by 20 is 18 degree and you can examine that for 18 degree when theta 1 is 18 degree if you calculate these angles you will find that this error is not 0 slightly more but still it is it will be within acceptable limit. However, if we uh, with this closed solution if we plot the graph for flow ripple then we can only examine how much difference will be there. Now, the again if we uh, use this general form of equations this L, L uh, we have to express what we have derived and um, the maximum flow now we are trying to find out when the maximum flow will occur. If we examine this equation then when L is equal to 0 then there will be the maximum flow. Now, this maximum flow simply if we put this 0 this is expressed by q d max and we find in equation 10 this simply this term is not there. Now, again one interesting point uh, uh, I would like to mention that R p 1 by R p 2 usually you will find 1 that means they are of same size gear, but in some design they are not equal. However, this number is not uh, very big and what we will find this is close to 1 either it will be less than 1 or it will be higher than 1, but it is very close to 1 that means this term is always close to 2. Similarly, the minimum flow output of pumps occurs when L is maximum that that means when it is at the starting because we are we have in this geometry we have considered that from this starting point it is gradually approaching to this point and our total uh, length is definitely at starting and then final length. But this length will gradually decrease and however, this length will be maximum when it is L s and substituting that what we find that this will be the minimum flow. Okay. With this negative sign with this as a maximum value the total value will be minimum. Therefore, what we can find in ripple the maximum peak amplitude from lowest point to the highest point definitely q d max by q d mean which is again expressed by this one and this can be easily calculated because this L s will be fixed geometrically we can find out L s we do not have to go for any numerical solutions in this case. Okay. Now, if we would like to find out the average flow then we have to equate all um, uh, such flow from starting point to the end point that means, we can make this integral. Now, here just keep in mind that here minus sign has been used because this minus sign is in the opposite from this pitch point actually this total length will be added that means, we have to consider from the starting to the end point and which is which must be equal to what this is equal to the base pitch simply we can write here this is the base pitch length here. Okay. Now, then this integration becomes like this where we have introduced a 
nu term m which is expressed uh, in this form. In that case again we have to calculate L s and L f you can see this uh, L s uh, plus L f uh, that is actually total length we are considering the actually total length. So, this is so while you are equating you have to be a little careful about this plus minus sign. Okay. Now, usually the teeth numbers of drive driver and driven gear are same in common gear pumps, right. However, pumps with equal as well as different numbers of gear teeth are considered for the purpose of comparing and finding the optimum flow ripple characteristics. Now, this exercise um, is uh, done by Mullering to find out whether uh, is there any advantage to optimize the flow ripple uh, by changing the gear ratio from 1. Now, to make a clear comparison among pumps of different teeth pairs, the average flow rate of each pump is maintained constant in the design process. Now, the advantage of dimensional uh, less analysis is that we can, uh, we can uh, uh, find out the non dimensional flow and then we can multiply with actual dimension to get the flow or in other words depending on the flow rate what we uh, done suppose we select the teeth number we um, select then uh, the speed or whatever it might be or um, center distance working pressure angle all we fix up. So, we can equate for non dimensional form. Now, then if you would like to have more flow from this pump simply what you can do one is of obviously, you can flow rate if you want more flow rate one is that you can go on increasing the speed, but otherwise for a fixed speed what we can do we can simply change the module we can simply change the size to have more volume output. Hmm. So, this means that depending on the flow rate usually say speed depending on the accuracy of this pump manufacturing accuracy of this pump there is a speed limitation say for example, in usually gear pump you may not find more than 2500 rpm. Hmm. If you go for very high speed then there will be very uh, high frequency noise will be there. Hmm. Again of course, that how it is uh, the teeth are ground all such things depends on what is the casing dimensions, how is the error in center distance all su such things will depend to have the flow. So, then depending on that depending on the purpose what we do we finalize that what will be the speed. Then if we want to increase the flow rate with that speed maximum flow rate what we do we go for higher module instead of 4 module we can go for 5 module like this. Now, in other words q d average as expressed in equation 24 is held constant for all pump designs. So, here I shall show you some results or typical results for of such analysis in that case we have considered this is fixed. Now, um, what we have considered the result of close form approximation we have considered to find out the solution that is we have considered L is equal to L s minus theta 1 this expression from the approximation we have uh, found and then substituting this we get the starting length of action L s is defined in equation 15 the final length L f is derived 
uh, as uh, derived in equation 17 and then with this we get L f is equal to is expressed like this. Now, this separately we have to calculate. Now, theta 1 starting and theta 1 final that you can say as I told that is simply 2 pi divided by uh, number of teeth of the driving gear which we are driving the or gear 1 we would say. So, this calculation will not be diff difficult and we know this formula and from there we can calculate we can calculate the final length of contact means this one where this uh, uh, this expression for the final one is given by this one and this is also as I told that we can find out this and then theta 1 f 2 pi by z 1 as I told and psi 1 is pi by 2 z 1 that is the half tooth angle. Okay. Again from the geometry what we find R b 1 is equal to R p 1 cos alpha. Okay. Now, here I would like to say that if we have considered this R p 1 because R p 1 is something fictitious. If you ask if you given one gear if you ask measure its uh, pitch circle radius can you measure that you cannot measure you do not know what is pitch circle. Pitch circle is the circle when two gears are missing and if you divide the center distance by the gear ratio then only you will find the pitch point and then only you will find the r p 1. Okay. So, if we derived in that way r p 1 then we have to consider the working pressure angle, but if we consider this as a uh, standard then we should consider the standard pressure angle. Anyway, this expression is that R p 1 is equal to sec alpha. Okay. With that R p 2 is given by this one and the addendum circle radius of each gear uh, is uh, followed by the American gear manufacturing association standard that is AGMA standard in which according to their recommendations for the gear pump it is taken as the r a 1 is equal to z 1 plus 2 divided by z 1 in r p 1 which means the addendum factor is 2 by 2 is 1. Normally in standard gears we follow that even for the gear pump the same uh, standard is followed. Now, in design at first the number of teeth of gears are selected that means, in uh, non dimensional analysis also we will be first tempted to take z 1 is equal to z 2 and we can start with say teeth number is uh, for 20 degree if we select the 20 degree pressure angle in that case we will probably we will take this z 1 z 2 very close to 17 which is the minimum teeth number for 20 degree pressure angle and probably we will compromise from to starting from 20 to this side may be 16 not less than that 16 teeth without gear correction is possible if we use the pinion cutter suitable pinion cutter. So, in that case we may consider from 16 to 20 like that. Okay. Let us consider we have considered say 16. So, 16 for z 1 and z 2 is also 16. Now, the average flow rate of pump in this case in this calculation we are going to show some results q d average is very close to 0 0.3. So, it is taken 0 0.297 this is an arbitrary value one can one can take 0 0.1 also. Hmm. But we have to be careful that from some absurd value all the data will be absurd. So, now we consider again these equations and m is expressed like this and in that way typical 
now we get the some result which is shown in the next slide in and 12 now there may be a questions for 12 number of teeth do we need a corrections in general we need correction but in case of gear pump the tooth load is not that high for power transmission gear um, for reduction gear box usually tooth loads are high if we use the steel and then uh, for 12 teeth without any correction the root is weak but in this case root is not that weak only problem is that we have to analyze the contact so that if the contact try to approach beyond the involute then there will be some problem again if uh, a cutter is designed properly that is the pinion cutter we are considering the state tooth or in mass production definitely hub cutter then it is also possible that with 12 teeth uncorrected the root fillet is not severely undercut ok. So, therefore, um, in this case because this is dimensional analysis what we can consider simply we can say that this is the module used for the flow we will not consider the correction of gear teeth because with the correction of gear teeth then definitely this volume we have to while we analyze this contact point that will vary we must introduce that correction part in that analysis. Mm. But here in this case we shall not consider or uh, this calculation in made, made without considering that these are corrected gear this is uncorrected gear. So, 13 and 12 then in that series that z 1 we have kept 13 up to this point and it is varied from 12 to 16. Then gradually we have increased the teeth number and we have that increased that driving teeth number up to 16 whereas, driven from 12 to 16 that means in this case only say this is one case where both the teeth are equal similarly there is another case where both the teeth are equal and in case of this also 16 teeth there are 16 16 teeth ok. So, 13 13 then 14 14 then 15 15 and then 16 16 these two are of equal teeth. If we, if we only consider say these two as we find that definitely center distance factor is changing however, if we consider the what are the flow ripples there we will uh, um, I will show the graph, but before that I would like to take I have expressed that R P 1 and R P 2 may not be the standard one just mentioning the center distance we can uh, dimensional and say center distance we can mention what might be the volume because that will directly give us the non dimensional flow rate we can compare with this non dimensional flow rate with the center distance. Now, a uh, say this is the center distance and this center distance non dimensional center distance we have varied from um, approximately from 1.5 to 2.6 and then what we find with different combination of teeth say if we consider the blue line then that is with 13 teeth in the uh, z 1 is the 13 and z 2 is varying from 8 to 20 we have calculated from 8 to 20 we have extended this graph, but in this chart was 13 something 13 was their minimum teeth number. But what we find that this is with the driving gear when it is 13 and this curve when driving gear is 14 and this is with 15 and this is 16. So, from this chart we can have a conclusion that the center distance increases strongly as the number of teeth on the driven gear increases and decreases weakly as the number of teeth on the driving gear 
increases. Okay. This means that you can judge this from this graph. What we find that if we uh, increase the number of teeth of the driven gear, then this is this increases rapidly. But on the other hand, if we when we increasing 13 to 16, then for a given number of uh, driven gear, this variation is not much. Okay, this variation is not much. Whereas the uh, if we change uh, the, the driving gear one, then there will be lot of change. So from there we can have a some assessment what pair we should select for the pump. But again I would say that this normal practice is still equal z1 is equal to z2 and there is really not much reason that this number to be varied. If there is reduction of noise, flow ripple etcetera that is nominal not much. This results say that uh, physically smaller pumps of the same displacement per revolution may be designed if the number of teeth on the driven gear is decreased while the number of teeth on the driving gear is in increased. So, if we make uh, the driven gear this is small and this is big the size of the gear pump will be smaller. Uh, but I would say this is not much still for the sake of optimization the size will be small. However, we are not considering what really will be to the noise and dynamics. The instantaneous flow ripple of the pump is given by the solution of equation 7 uh, that is this is this equations and then we find that this is the flow ripple for different combination of teeth. Okay. And this angle you can directly you can calculate by 2 pi uh, divided by the number of teeth of the uh, drive gear say z 1. So, for example, if we uh, divide 2 pi divided by uh, oh no this is for half of the angle. So, pi by 13 how much it will be 3 divided by 13 3 divided by 3.14 divided by 13 will be approximately 0.25 or so no. So, this is 2 pi by 13 1 full cycle yes 2 pi by 13 and then 2 pi by 14 like this. Okay. So, I think uh, this one for 16 teeth hmm, 16 teeth is 0 0.4 whereas, for the 13 teeth it is around 0 0.5. Anyway, this calculation is not that difficult, but you can see this uh, ripple. The ripple is increasing with the uh, uh, definitely if the teeth number driving gear teeth number it is small. Now, uh, we should also consider the flow pulse ampl amplitude which is expressed by this equation and then this we can if we plot this value with the driving increase in the uh, number of teeth here and in this axis this uh, amplitude then we find for different teeth z 1 is 16 here and z 1 is 13 and definitely amplitude will be higher for in case of small number of teeth and what the observation that strong dependence on the number of teeth on the driving gear. Otherwise, this flat is not um, this, this curve is uh, almost say flat you can say with the increase in number of teeth of the driven gear. Uh, so, we end here.